how has these video conferencing changed the way that you do real estate these days? It has definitely helped us continue on with real estate these days. Um, I know a lot of agents are doing Zoom meetings to do listing presentations and even buyer consults so you can get face to face without having the um, limitations that we're facing right now. What are what are the main limitations then? Do you, are you allowed or is someone able to contact their lending institution and work on loan paperwork? Can they I mean basically you can do everything except for be in the same room as people. Is that right? Yes, so the governor has, has considered us essential, so we're able to go out and, and do showings and stuff, but we are limited to showing one person at a time. So he's reduced um, some of our abilities. We can still go and do stuff, but a lot of the agents in the area, you know, we're taking the safety thing very seriously. So um, trying to do and put into place all the technology tools that we have. Um, so like virtual showings, um, are a kind of a new thing that's been happening. And like I said, uh, virtual meetings for um, consults with buyers and sellers as well. Well, that's, yeah, now that I'm thinking about this, the safety of not only the current homeowner, but the potential home buyers, there would be uh, a lot of folks that could possibly be going through your home and uh afterwards i'm sure you're gonna have to wipe everything down are people still leaving the you know how you leave your business card on one of the counters i, mean, I can't imagine you're still doing that kind of stuff are you so we're actually we're, we don't have to do that right now they waive that so we are not having to do that um to, you know to help prevent the spread of germs mm -hmm. so thing we don't have to do so t let's talk about the numbers. People are sitting around their homes. They've been there for about a month. They're looking at the walls going, gosh, I got to get out of here. Let's find a bigger house. We need yes. a bigger house. Exactly. And so um, I pulled some numbers from the beginning, the 1st of April until today. Um, we've had 28 new listings come on the market. So that's pretty big. I mean, that's, in, that's Mason County as a whole. And then uh, as far as pendings go, we're at 53 pendings. And to date for sold, we're at 40 pen or 40 sales closed. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. April. So things are still happening. Um, you know, people are always asking, well, what should we be doing? And it really depends on it's it's by case basis. If you're comfortable listing your home. If you're vacant, then that makes it a lot easier. If you're not living in it, obviously. Um, if you're living in it, then you're gonna have to take into consideration the client's comfort level, what your comfort level is, and obviously buyers as they're coming in. But um, we're still seeing a lot of buyers who are ready to go, they're serious. Um, so that's, that's a good thing about the market right now. And honestly, the buyers are, we're still seeing some multiple offer situations. But um, buyers don't have as much competition right now. Unfortunately, our unemployment levels are obviously skyrocketed. Yeah. So that has affected people's ability to be able to obtain their loans. We still have a lot of other people who are able to continue moving forward. What's the timeline nowadays? Is it still kind of, if everything gets in, it's a 30-day situation or are things uh, kind of extended a little bit because of how we have to send stuff electronically? Yeah, so things have been extended, and that's, you know, due to the fact that there for a while, um, appraisers, they weren't essential, and so it kind of stopped things up at the beginning of April. Things are moving forward now, and um, I had a transaction that went pending just towards the end of March, and we're now getting an appraiser in there. So um, it's a little slowed down, so we are being mindful of our dates and including different that the MLS provides us so that all of our um, buyers and sellers are covered as far as any leg time you might be seeing in lending processes and or um, inspections as well. So your office is closed to the public, but folks are still able to go online and that's where you put all of the listings and, and everything like that. What would, what would either a buyer, what should a buyer have um, in mind and ready to submit documents and what what should a seller start to do to have their documents ready to go 
So as far as uh, buyers go, um, they are definitely going to want to already have that process going with their lender and taking those steps to be pre-approved. Um, a lot more sellers are requiring that your, your buyer that you're going to be bringing into their home is pre-approved and ready to go. Um, obviously, they just don't want as many people wandering through their homes in this um, condition right now. So yeah. um, there's that. So buyers just need to be ready to go. And, um, and sellers, you know, especially if they've been thinking about getting their house on the market, right now is a great time to be doing some of those um, smaller repairs, maybe landscaping, um, that kind of stuff that you can do while you're at home without having to go anywhere. Um, and then just reaching out to a local agent and have them do up a market analysis so that the seller sellers are going to know what their home can be coming on the market for. So I think, you know, at the end of April, we're going to have a bit a better picture of what the market's done locally um, to see if there's been any price adjustments happening. Um, I haven't seen anything major happening at this point. So I think as the months go on, um, you know, time will tell with the market. So if you're a buyer, would you suggest coming in um, with a, how would you best talk to your potential buyer of a house for an offer and for what, what they can say, basically to get it done as quickly as possible. So I'm coming in here, I've got my pre-approval letter and I'm, I'm ready to give you asking uh, I'm ready to give you asking plus 2%, you know, a little bit higher than asking or how do, how do, how does a buyer get to an agreement quickly here? Yep. So um, honestly, if the, if the home is, is priced properly um, and the agent that's assisting the buyer can go through and they can look and take and look at the comps on the market right now to make sure that that house isn't overpriced. Um, and then if they're looking to get into the home and move quickly as possible, they're going to want to put their strongest foot forward. So they're going to want to make sure that, um, again, they're pre-approved, that they have figured out what they're going to be doing with their closing costs, as well as putting in just the right amount of contingencies to make sure that they're covered. As you can see here, Jamie, yeah. we're in the... <laughs> Kaiser, where are you going? Did you want to say hi to Jamie? That's Come fine. say hi. Hi, Ben. Hi. Oh, gosh. Get out of here. All right. So live radio doing the riveting nice. radio <laughs> real estate here in just two seconds. I think, Jamie, we'll put a pause on this rest of the conversation. How can That's folks good. get in touch with you right now? Um, you know, they can call the main number at John L. Scott, 360-426-3319 or johnlscott.com. Perfect. All right. Well, good to talk with you and good catching yes. up. Let's do it again here you. in a week or two after we get through the month and see what the numbers yeah. look like. Sounds great. Thank All you. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> okay. You too. Bye. Bye. All right. So this will air, uh, what, Friday? Okay. And I'll Sounds have good. the video up there and everything. So. Awesome. Cool. All right. Have a good day. All right. You too. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.